Before we begin, thank you very much to, and I have to make sure I get this one right, subscribe to Goji Glorblin. Glorblin sounds like an alien, but anyways, thank you very much uh, for the support. Thank you very much, everyone, for the support. It's always appreciated. So, we are close to the end of the month, which means it's almost time for the monthly Q&A once again. So, if you've got something to ask me, if you're curious about anything, as long as it is in within terms of service, please go to last month's that was posted on October 1st and leave your question in the comments there. Uh, in the usual rules, you should know by now, keep it to one question, make sure it's not something that's really wordy or takes a lot of thought to answer, We're trying to get, you know, snappy questions so everyone can get their, their question in, uh, and... Uh, if you can, if you got a comment, just mark it as a comment so we don't accidentally read through comments when we're trying to get through questions. You should know basic protocol and etiquette of those by now. So if you want something asked, that's where to go to participate in that video. So as promised by Hasbro, we finally did get some updates on Studio Series. A bunch of new reveals over in London today. Uh, and I want a, a quick shout out. Most of these images came from Sixo over on Twitter, who was on the is on site and very quick to get us these looks. So thank you very much to him. Uh, but we're going to take a look. We're just kind of going to browse through all the new Studio Series reveals. And then at the end, we're going to talk about the one. We're going to talk about that one. But we're going to start simple. We're going to start with an interesting one. It's Rumble. But it's concept rumble. And that's an interesting idea. So I think I mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, Star Wars. And I can... Hang on. I think... Uh, okay, no, I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. The D&D shelf is blocking it. But across from me, uh, we do have Star Wars figures, which are called concept series. And the concept series is based on the original draft designs for popular Star Wars characters. And it's something they did just to throw a little bit of variety and something interesting in with the figure collections. Uh, and give someone who's bought literally every Chewbacca or every C-3PO something new to get, which is not the worst of ideas. We've heard in the past that the, the uh, Transformer team has been taking inspiration from the Star Wars team on occasion, most notably the Holiday Optimus Prime we got last year, which was their way of recycling the Volvo Optimus that was originally going to be an Amazon truck, which of course fell through. So that is another concept they seem to have aped from the Star Wars team, running concepts. And it does allow them to do a few things. Number one, it gives them a place to go in studio series. You know, I've talked in the past before, a big reason why we have Gamer Edition Studio Series is because they're out of almost every iteration of the big names. Bumblebees, Optimus Primes, Megatron, Starscreams. And those are the names that retailers look for when they're buying figures for their stores because they know they will sell no matter what. So they need to keep a fresh influx of Optimus and Megatrons and all the big names in order to make sure... Uh, the retailers actually stock different waves. That's why those characters are always done. Marketing. Marketing, sales, retail. So, to go with this gives them a direction that they can expand in. Possibly infinitely. If there are some incre if there are some like interesting or cool designs out there for characters that maybe never made it into the movies or very alternate takes on existing characters, we could potentially see those in studio series now, which could present something unique and interesting. So there is a concept for Rumble to actually appear based on the Bumblebee movie uh, character style. It is blue. It's a blue Rumble. Don't everyone freak out. It's movie verse. They can color it whatever they want and name it whatever they want. I think what's interesting to the design is that it's actually face plated. So it actually looks like a mini sound wave, ironically enough. It's like Soundwave's child. It's like maybe. He would have given birth in the movie, in a weird sense. But it's cool to see, and I do think it's a cool direction. It's a simple figure. You know, here, here is out of box. It's a box. It's just the box that's going to fit in your Bumblebee Soundwave's chest. But not a, bad, not a bad idea. Not a bad execution. I'm glad the pile driver shapes are in there, too. So that's always an iconic little piece for Rumble. So simple enough. Simple enough. And, of course, we're probably going to get a frenzy at some point in the core series, too. Moving on, we have... Mohawk, 
which seems overdue. Like, when they announced Core Series, didn't you just expect Mohawk to join them at some point? It doesn't seem just kind of blatantly obvious that he was going to make the grade. Well, he is in there now, and it actually looks pretty cool. Like, it actually, it actually serves like a pretty... Uh, a pretty good little muscle motorcycle there. Real, I actually really like the, how the vehicle mode looks. And then, yeah, uh, they seem to have captured his robot mode pretty well here. Uh, we do have a shot of uh, how the bike mode looks outside of their shot. So the shots of the screen actually seem to have like a little bit of a, a yellowish hue to them. So a lot of the silvers don't quite work. So a lot of the silvers uh, show up a little bit tinted brown. He does seem to be accurate gray. Uh, so, you know, he's, it's a, if it's an all gray figure, it's going to be Studio Series. You know this by now. Uh, we have one in shot. Yeah, one in package. It shows a little bit of how he looks. I like the artwork on the box, too. So that's actually a neat little touch. So Mohawk looks good. I actually am, strangely enough, kind of interested in it because he's a unique design. And it looks like Studio Series executed him pretty well. Uh, moving on from there, long awaited, we actually have Wheeljack in Studio Series design. He looks like he's going to be pretty good. Uh, it does take a little bit from the previous Wheeljacks we've seen in that a lot of the bulk of his vehicle forms the actual bulk of the robot mode. He's not relying nearly as much on panels as a lot of the other studio figures tend to do. And I'm actually curious about how the transformation works to get the door wings inside out. I think it's interesting that we can see the insides of the doors, because that's not the typical direction they go with for those. It does look neat, though. It does look neat. I'm like genuinely curious how this is going to go. I think it's hilarious that as long as they had the Volkswagen license for these van, for like the a v, like a Volkswagen van, VW van, uh, that they went ahead and made the, the Stranger Things crossover at the same time. That might be why it took so long for this guy to come out because they were waiting for the previous one to get announced. So the license kind of meshed and like went along like parallel with each other. So they got the most out of it they could weird licensing thing like that happens all the time so it wouldn't surprise me if there's like a little bit of a weird legal thing why it took so long for wheeljack to be announced cool that he is though because it actually looks like the best take on the character so far which you would expect it's studio series but sometimes that's not always the case sometimes it works out weird pablo is not the only deluxe we got to see though we actually got a reveal for scorponok as well and he is a far cry from the original deluxe Scorponok from the 07 movie. It's nice when they're actually like making an effort. <laughs> I know the original one never had a robot mode in mind. He was supposed to be like a, like a laser beak or a ravage. He was just a component of a larger figure. So to have a nice one, to have like a nice like movie-esque Scorpion figure with a cool transformation, nice breath of fresh air. Really like to see it. It actually looks like it might like skirt the typical scorponok thing where the big pincers become the become the arms it looks like they become the legs on this one uh it could be mistaken could be mistaken because we didn't again we didn't have an in hand we didn't have an on floor uh photo of this it was just the slide but it definitely looks like it's doing something a little bit different than your standard scorponok and that's interesting to see i mean i, I actually really like to see that um I'm curious how he transforms, because he looks cool. He actually looks really, really cool. In the hands of the right customizer, uh, Knock Knock Grimlockamus, uh, this will actually look really, really cool, like up with like like Fall of Cybertron kickback. You know, it's kind of got the same aesthetics going on. Kind of dig it. So I'm looking forward to this one, too. This one actually looks fun. This one looks fun. This one looks different. It might be a very rare Studio Series pickup for me. Again... Wish we had some in hand. Now here's one we can get through real quick. Because uh, we've all seen this before. There's no real shock or surprise here. They're doing another Junkie on Scrap Heap. Officially revealed by Hasbro. It's just another Junkie on. So Junk Heap holds a personal distinction for me. Junk Heap is the first time I have ever seen a Transformer figure. That was available both at a normal retail store in my area and at a liquidation store at the same time. 
You know how bad a toy has to shelf warm to have unsold stuff on the shelf and unstuff so unsold stuff in the warehouse at, at the same time? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And then they're, now they're going to run it back. Uh, anything in me would say, like, this should have been a store exclusive or, is, or a, like a Generation Selects. I don't know if you're going to get another junkie on to work at retail level. Uh, I mean, it's an okay mold. I'm not thrilled with it. I mean, as wheel as a uh, Retgar, it works, but you know who who cares about scrap heap? It's cool for those who want a horde of junkions. Don't get me wrong, you know. And to have a set of you know a pair of junkions to go with Retgar is fine. But now it's also kind of throwing your ratios off because now you just got one. You know, because now you got. You got one junkie on to be in robot mode, one junkie on to be in vehicle mode for that junkie on to ride. And now you got an odd junkie on out. So do you make a fourth that's going to shelf warm even worse? I am not optimistic about Scrap Heap's future. To say the least, I am not optimistic. Uh, there's the back of the box. If you want to curious about the back of the box, the bio is completely boring and generic. So don't worry about that one too much. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, he's on ears on ears in the box. He was on the show floor like that. At least it's bright yellow. At least he stands out. It's about all I can say for the boy. I don't know. It's just lackluster. I was hoping for Studio Series Swoop, you know? We're waiting for that last Dinobot to drop. That's what I really was hoping for out of all of this. Um, you know, maybe... I mean, they're finishing off, like, the, uh, the Rise of the Beast Studio Series, so that's fine, I guess. Um... But no, no, it's, it's, it's not a, it's a letdown. It's a letdown. It's not the 86 reveal I wanted. Let's talk about the big reveals. So number one, the mis the mystery is over. For months now, we have seen a listing for a uh, movie 7 Megatron, which was the Bumblebee movie. Uh, and no, no, movie 6 Megatron, which is the Bumblebee movie. And we're just kind of going like, he wasn't in that movie. Well, he was supposed to be. But remember, Bonaventura being a moron kept saying that it was going to be a prequel and then he said it was a spinoff and then it was like a reboot, but he didn't like the term reboot because he doesn't understand what a reboot is. Point being, the idiot, because of his weird marketing, they kept, they kept Megatron off screen just in case this weird mesh of a movie still turned out to be a prequel to 07 somehow even though it completely contradicts the 07 movie. So let's just ignore that. Ignore that. Uh, yeah, we have a Megatron. There's a long wind-up just to say, hey, we have a new Megatron. It is leader class. It is, again, a concept series because it was never released in the movies. Uh, you know, and, and it's really nice looking. I wish this one was on the floor so we had more than just the slide to go off of. Because it does look really cool. It does look really cool. And like a lot of those Cybertronian designs from the Bumblebee movie, it looks the way that an updated movie-style Transformer really should have looked from the beginning. It's got the recognizable silhouette of Megatron. It's got the right details to identify as that character, even though it's hyper-detailed. You know? So, it's what I wanted like and it looks good it looks really really good now the fun twist to this Megatron is that it is a triple changer the tank mode we see there obviously it's a it's a diesel tank mode it is again in that realm of what I call a metal slug tank which if you've ever played metal slug the tank is real squat and kind of tall uh that's kind of in it's in the same realm it's not the most complex of transformations you know the turret is just made up of his arms you know but it's a Cybertronian tank. It doesn't have to do any hiding. So I don't begrudge the details like that. I just look at it and go, ooh, that's kind of a neat looking tank. And then it has a jet mode. The jet mode is not as nice. So the jet mode follows in something of like a Cybertron, Megatron-esque style of jet mode, where yes, the semblance of a jet is there, but it it's kind of clearly not like designed to be a jet other than there's a few fold there's a fold out cockpit and wings and that's about it everything else just kind of looks like robot junk tabbed together kind of 
it's just one of those like in you know like uh use your imagination modes uh and it's okay for what it is it's okay for what it is but um again cybertronian doesn't have to conform just has to look somewhat like a jet so your brain makes the connection i'm okay with it and the fact it just as an extra thing the toy can do that's pretty good i'll give i'll give a credit for that so that one i'm looking forward to too i might grab that one because it is an interesting thing for them to do and i kind of want the concept thing to keep going it's just a fascinating idea to expand studio series and then there's the one that everyone on twitter mentioned the one on everyone on twitter is kind of going on about right now and that is Starscream from Gamer Edition from War from Cybertron Starscream and everyone was looking forward to this cuz hey 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 more Voyager seekers and people really like the design from the game uh, and then they did this so real quick there he is on the back of the box uh, in full render how he really you know like like you know like how he looks nice you know this is how he actually kind of looks nice but there's definite problems going on here. We look at a close-up of the box. You already see some issues. The colors are a lot flatter. It looks like he's got bunny ears because they didn't angle them the right way. Uh, and yeah, uh, there's gap. There's things missing on the shoulders, which a lot of the early photos, because we got a, we got someone got a hold of this and showed it off before the London event, meaning everyone saw this with missing pieces at first and went, oh man, that looks horrible. Which is why I tell you, don't ever trust early stuff because you never know if it's complete or not. This In in this case, uh, those uh, little shoulder things are separate components. Which I guess because Hasbro is still being stubborn about adding windows back to the packaging of Transformers, uh, I'm assuming they did that uh, to prevent theft because it's just mushroom pegged on. They would have been really easy to steal. Um... It's just a stupid, it's a stupid thing. It's a stupid thing. It makes the toy look bad in packaging. It makes the toy look like it's broken in packaging. Uh, just add the window back. There, there's there's environmentally friendly plastic substitutes you can get. Just use that, please. But let's take a look. Here's the in hand with the little shoulder things. And this is not great. <laughs> this is not great. No one is sure. Okay, so... We're going to get to explain it. Like, everyone originally focused on, like, how huge the cockpit is. Uh, my observance on Twitter is it looks like he's wearing a beehive on his chest. Uh, so, a lot of people, a lot of people going on about this and just how it just doesn't look nearly as good as the first attempt. Here's the vehicle mode. The tiny wings are actually accurate. That's actually accurate. But again, it just makes the cockpit look super weird because the cockpit on the, the War for Cybertron design is small. It's not anything like this. And then Hasbro goes and does one of the dumbest things I think I've seen them do recently. And remember, this is why Thu gets invited to be on the live streams and not me. Because I will call Hasbro out when they're being dumb. And here is Hasbro being dumb. The behind the scenes is already out for this. And then they decided, to they announced that like, well, we had to expand the size of the cockpit to accommodate the transformation. And during that exact same explanation, they post this photo, which does two things. Number one, it proves they didn't have that problem in 2012. Over a decade ago, they managed to engineer this character and this design without having this giant cockpit problem. This wasn't an issue. How is the engineering so much better 10 years out than it was in 2012, but they get fouled up by things that weren't a problem back then? And then they go and put it side by side with the original just to kind of show how bad it looks compared to the original. The original one looks so much better. All you had to do was upscale that one, change a few things to make it look, look closer to the character model, and just release it. I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's the original ones. Like, it's just like with the, with the gamer edition Megatron, we kind of like looked at that and went, oh, if that like, if that's like the original, that'll look, that'll be really good. And then engineering wise, it's nothing like the original and it's a lot worse. And now we kind of have this opposite effect here where no one's gotten it in hand to know if the engineering is good. We don't really need it just to see like, it doesn't look anything like it's supposed to. They showed the they showed the the CAD model side by side by the with the render in the behind the scenes too. 
It's not even close. It's not even remotely close. I mean, yes, that's where the head goes in the transformation, but why wasn't that a problem with the original? Why is that a problem now? Why couldn't you figure it out now? Like, and here's the game model next to the toy. Look at how off that is. Look at how off model that is. It looks terrible. Ah, I don't know. I had such hope for Gamer Edition, and it just keeps getting worse. Like, it's like they put all the effort into Optimus Prime, and then everybody else is just like a weekend project they did while they were still hung over from a night of drinking the day before. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a letdown. But that's just my opinion as I'm running down all the Studio Series stuff that they showed off in London. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you on board with that Star Scream? Or are you just kind of, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the Beehive Screamer. Uh, but that's how the day went. So thank you everyone for watching. I will see you next time. We parlay with the captain. You would think a werecroc is going to listen to elvish rules of piracy. Of course it would be Got the freaking elves cool. that, that invented parlay. I had to think of a quick replacement for the French. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>